Hello, my name is Joe Murray. I'm a gastroenterologist in the Mayo Clinic in the Celiac Disease Program. Testing for gluten contamination in foods. The Codex Alimentaris and the FDA have established requirements for gluten-free labeling. So in the United States, if a food regulated by the FDA is labeled gluten-free, it must have less than 20 parts per million of gluten present. However, there must be some way of verifying this. And certainly one way of ensuring this is to make sure that nothing goes into the food or the processed food that ever is contaminated with gluten. But of course there needs to be verification or if something is maybe derived from something that might originally have been contaminated but is cleaned or decontaminated, there needs to be a reliable way of detecting excess gluten content that exceeds those 200 parts per minute. There are maybe 10 or 12 different kits available for testing for gluten. And in a recent paper by Slot et al. Um, in the journal of Serial Chemistry, they examined the performance of all of these different test kits. And their conclusion was that these are not particularly reliable. And it depends very much on what form the food being tested has. They use the term food matrix. So for example, bread has a particular form or matrix. Cookies, crackers, liquid material, all are different. And it's very important when you're using some method of analysis that the actual test subject, the test material, can actually contact the, um, the sensor or whatever it is that's measuring or detecting gluten. And if something is solid, it may not actually connect uh, to be measured. And so there seems to be a high level of variability and these authors quite rightly point out that we need, urgently need, more accurate ways of testing gluten. Now what does that mean for the patients with celiac disease? The first thing it means is you have to be cautious about interpreting the testing results. Especially if you buy a kit yourself and undertake the test, it may not be accurate. For example, one finding something that's been known for a while, is that the test, to, test kit for wheat gluten may overestimate the amount of barley proteins present. And unfortunately could make one feel that it's, that it's contaminated at a high level when it's not. So I think we have to be, and there's also a tremendous amount of variability with testing over time. So doing a test once on a food may simply not be enough. You may have to repeat that test multiple times to make sure that it's truly accurate. So for example, if you took 10 different food substances, tested them with the same kit once, the chances that you get a false positive test in one of those 10 is very high. It doesn't mean that that food is contaminated with gluten. It means the test could give a false high reading. So we really have to pay attention to the quality of the test and how it's done, and is it in what's called the matrix of the food type that it's appropriate for. So watch this space. There will likely be a lot more work on this as more and more food manufacturers are trying to provide gluten-free foods. Thank you.